Hey everybody, welcome back to another week of Dive In. We're going to have so much fun today. I can't wait to see if Finn and Gilly are able to rescue the Nautilans. So get comfy and check this out. There you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. Have you seen this place? Like look, this place is unbelievable. I gotta admit, when we first landed on the cargo get cargo deck, I was not feeling it. But this, after exploring here, the ship is kind of growing on me. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's uh, one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. They've managed to turn this submarine into their own little city over the years. But there's so much have changed on the surface world that they just don't understand. They have no idea what they're missing. That's strange. My candy's slimy. Uh, yeah. Uh, what you uh, what you got there, Gilly? Swedish fish. I was, I found it in the kitchen a few minutes ago. Um, I was having a serious snack attack. Mm -hmm. But the food seems kind of um limited around here, so I just chose something that I recognized. Yeah. I, uh, I hate to break it to you, Gilly, but I don't think those are Swedish fish. In fact, I don't think those are candy at all. I think those are just dried goldfish, and I'm not talking about the cracker kind. I mean, real fish from the sea. Ew. <laughs> oh. Oh, gross, 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 gross. It makes me think of my pet fish, Goldilocks. Um, I had her for like three whole months. I think I just ate her whole family. Mm, this ship is cool, but if this food situation does not improve, I'm gonna need to find an exit strategy. Yeah. I don't know how much longer I can take it. Gilly, we, we've only been on the ship for 35 minutes. What happened to this ship is really growing on me. It, 35 minutes? What? It feels like so much longer. The ship stopped. I mean, it's growing on me. The second I found out I ate actual goldfish. <laughs> they were in my mouth. I'm clamming up at the thought of it. Oh, I feel trapped. Gilly, Gilly, you're going to be fine. Just imagine being on this ship for 41 years. Because that's how long the Nautilans have been here for. Rescuing hundreds of people from a ship at the bottom of the ocean will take some time. This is just the reality of, the reality of it, especially since we're pioneering this type of expedition. Now, while you were rummaging through the kitchen, I found all of these books and notebooks. Come over here and help me figure out how to get everybody to shore. We've got to calculate how many people can be on our submarine at one time. You're right. I'm overreacting. Uh, this is going to be worth it once we get all the people aboard yeah. on the Freedom back to dry land. But I'm a little concerned about something. Uh, what's that? Mm, well, it's just that while I was in the kitchen, uh, I don't, I, I met a girl, her name is Pearl, and like, I don't know if we're going to be able to convince all these people to go back up. The Nautilans are happy here. When I was hunting for a snack, Pearl said that she... Well, she just kept talking on and on and on uh, about how the Nautilans love living here. How it's better than the surface air cities and how they never want to leave. Yeah, I know. They're feeling pretty skeptical right now. They don't understand what kind of life they can really have. That's why we have to help them understand. They're never going to listen to us if we don't know more about them. <laughs> Sorry, I, I kind of missed some of that. Uh, look at this. Hmm. I think it's an ancient navigation device. Or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, it could be. But uh, this really does look important. I, uh, mm. Hey, this is a recording device. Maybe it has lots of information about the Nautilans. <laughs> Maybe it'll be worth money. Okay, kiddo, you gotta get money off your brain. We're trying to help these people. 
but it really does have a lot of information. Do you think it still works? That was not exactly what I expected, but that was pretty hilarious. Hey Finn, check it out. Pretty impressive, hey? Oh yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> the Nautilans have obviously been bored over the years, but let's hope they didn't record over anything that we actually need to know. Let's try it again. Day three of the Nautilus maiden voyage. Travel update. Currently on target for port arrival in three weeks. All 50 test ships are on course. Vacuum seal technology in the ship's living quarters seems to be effective and not interfering with guest comfort on board. Yes. Okay. No. Really. Not really. So something obviously went wrong before the three weeks was up because yeah. these people seem stuck in the 80s. I wonder if that guy is still here. I, I just don't know. Surely the captain didn't jump with the ship when it started to sink. But I'm more interested in what this vacuum system is talking about. What does it mean? And 50 ships? Was this like part of a fleet or something? That's so weird. Maybe if I can cross-reference it Plus, with the ship I have an log. idea. I bet Pearl knows something about this. I'm going to go and find her. Yeah. Yeah, you go. You get out of there. Vacuum seal technology. The vacuum seal prevents any compound from permeating the ship's exterior. It was invented in 1979 by the scientist at Tides Incorporated. I thought that was a laundry corporation. Funding for ships using technology began in 1982. Well, that explains why the Nautilans have been under the water and able to live here for 41 years. Note to the company, your vacuum seal technology works, but... How did they ever not find these people? They had 49 other ships. Wouldn't they have wanted to come back for them? There's got to be some current information for these people. Finn! Hi! Hey! I've got great news. Uh, did you find Pearl? Like, what did she say about the technology and the other ships? Did she talk about the other ships? Tell no, me! No! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I didn't exactly find her, but I was on my way to the kitchen and I found this. Oh, that's... Uh, yeah, uh, and don't worry. You're going to be proud. Yeah. It's going to be good. It looks perfect for fishing. No, Get some come on, goldfish. Finn. Finn, it's perfect for capturing the Nautilans. Oh. <laughs> if they don't want to go to the shore with us, we can just capture them and force <sighs> them to the shore with us. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you're probably worried they'll get mad at us. But we both know they'll thank us later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can put the books down. Problem solved. You're welcome. You're not going to need them. You're welcome. <sighs> Gilly, that's a terrible idea. No, no, we can't force people to follow us against their will. It doesn't work like that. Mm, but what about the story you told me earlier about the legendary fisherman Peter? Remember, he started following Jesus and fishing for men. Let's fish for men. I started thinking, and then that was my brilliant plan. We can just fish for the Nautilans. Well, I mean, your logic checks out there, but I understand why you're thinking that, but I don't think you totally understand what we're talking about with Peter. Maybe you should watch that again. 
Maybe it'll make a little bit more sense this time. God's story. Peter fishes for men. So part of God's story is about a guy named Peter, and it goes like this. Actually, hold it right there. Peter's real name was Simon. He lived in a place called Capernaum where he had a wife and worked as a fisherman. Simon was just a normal guy, but his life was about to change forever. See, Simon was fishing one day, like usual, when Jesus got into Simon's boat. He taught some people who were standing around. Then he said to Simon, go out into deep water. Let down your net so you can catch some fish. Simon had been fishing all night without catching anything. The last thing he wanted to do was go back out into deep water. But since Jesus told him to do it, Simon obeyed, even though it didn't make any sense. And guess what? He and all the other fishermen caught so many fish that their boats began to sink. When Simon finally got back to the shore, he fell to his feet in front of Jesus. He realized Jesus was not just a great teacher. He was God's son and the rescuer God had promised. Jesus said, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. Jesus wanted Simon to know that now that he knew who Jesus was, he could tell other people who Jesus was too. In fact, Jesus gave Simon a new name, Peter. It means rock, because Jesus would use Peter to build his church. Sometimes we think of a church as a building, but really, it's people who follow Jesus. And just like we might use rocks to build a church building, Peter was one of the very first people to follow Jesus and show others how to follow him too. And that's part of the story of Peter. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Simon was a normal guy. He lived in Capernaum. He was a fisherman. He met Jesus. Jesus told him to go to deep water. Simon obeyed. He caught fish! He realized Jesus was God's son. Jesus said Peter could tell others about Jesus. He called Simon Peter. And that's a part of God's story. Oh, I totally get it, boss. Yes. When Jesus taught Peter to fish for men, he wasn't catching them in the net or using a fishing pole. Instead of trying to catch the Nautilins with my net, I need to get to know them, share with them, mm -hmm. help them realize that how great their lives could be so that they could want to follow us to shore. Ah, oh, that's exactly it. When Peter went fishing for men, he knew something that those people didn't know, that Jesus loved them and that following him would change their lives. Because we know that the Nautilins can experience so much more if they follow us to shore, we can do our best to help them understand. And that's fishing for Nautilins, hmm. not capturing them in a net. Well, what are we waiting around here for? Let's go talk to them. We've, we've got to spend a whole lot of time with them. Once we get them to see what they're missing, they'll definitely want to be rescued from this ship. I think we should start with my sweet dance moves. Yeah, those are pretty impressive, but you might want to save those for later. Come on, let's go. Going this way. Ooh, why are they so stubborn? I just don't see how they don't get it. They're stuck down here with nothing cool. No video games, no internet, no cell phones. Don't even get me started on their music. Mm. Like, seriously? How was this stuff ever popular? Check out some of their dance moves. <laughs> yeah, those are some oldies, but they do kind of grow on you for a while. <laughs> so sad. What was I thinking? I could be surrounded by a massive pile of sand, dollars, and treasure right now, but instead I'm hanging out with people 
that don't know what a selfie is and they have no toilet paper. I know, it might be hard to see that right now, Gilly, but following me down here was not a mistake. You can't give up. It's just gonna take time for everyone on board to come around. They've gotta get comfortable with things the way they are and you gotta put yourself in their shoes. Or flippers. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good one. Um, <clears throat> they spent years hoping someone would rescue them. And when nobody ever came, they lost hope. That's just what happens, but we can give them hope. We just gotta get creative. Mm, all right, I won't give up. At least not yet. Maybe they'll follow us eventually. They will. For sure they will. Hey, Skipper's already coming around and he's the captain of this place. People on board are going to listen to him. And do you remember when I showed him those Instagram pictures of the crab leg eating contest? He seemed pretty fascinated about that. And I think he can help convince the others. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, I'm glad we found him, and he seems like a pretty cool guy, too. What's not cool was showing him those pictures. Not my best angle, Finn. <laughs> but Skipper didn't say he did say he'd play me in Go Fish tournament later. Supposedly, he's the ship's champion or something. So, so now, all of a sudden, you're interested in a Go Fish tournament? I don't know. You gotta do something to pass the time around here. Come on, let's go show Skipper how it's done. Let's do it. Can you believe the Nautilans want to stay on the ship? They don't realize what they're missing. Things may not be going as planned for Finn and Gilly quite yet, but I am glad that Gilly decided to stay on the ship and not give up on the Nautilans. Do you think she made a good decision? Yes, trying to rescue the Nautilans is going to be an experience that she will never forget. And that reminds me of today's Bible story. What was Peter's job before he met Jesus? You got it. Peter was a fisherman. He had no idea the life he was missing out on until Jesus came along. But once Peter started following Jesus, it changed everything. He started living a life that was greater than he could have ever imagined. Just like Peter followed Jesus, can we follow him too? Yes! Jesus loves us and has amazing plans for each one of us. When we follow him, our lives will be greater than we could ever imagine. That's exactly what we need to know today. So let's all say this together. Follow Jesus. Following Jesus isn't always easy. There are times when it may not make any sense to us, but we can trust that Jesus loves us and has great plans for us. I loved hanging out with all of you today, and I can't wait to see you guys back again next week to find out if the Nautilans decide to follow Finn and Gilly back to the shore. Before you go, though, let's all bow our heads, close our eyes, and pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for loving us and wanting to have a friendship with us. I pray that we would just continue to trust in you, Lord, as you have these great, amazing plans for each and every one of us. In your holy son's name we pray. Amen. All right. See everyone next week.